Our new cyclist crew was adjusting to the movement aboard Rosa. We spent two evenings anchored at Los Muertos, waiting for the weather window to cross over to the mainland. Our patience was rewarded with sufficient wind on the beam, but not so much as to feel uncomfortable. An average between five and six knots. Feeling okay? <laughs> we swapped and traded for a new AIS receiver in La Paz, which came in handy on the first evening out. We were able to spot and call a cargo ship by name, stating our intention to maintain our course under sail while they would cross just in front of us. The night was filled with breaching whales, crashing like bombs onto the water, and bioluminescent dolphins. 24 hours after leaving Los Muertos, the dolphins were saying good morning on our bow. No one on board was trying to act as if they were too impressed, though. <laughs> the shallow waters of the Mazatlan waterfront was filled with whales and one jumping marlin which escaped our grasp. fish this trip. One fish. Yeah, I got one tiny Sierra <laughs> macro and we lost the marlin. Just he's all happy. Well, please, but Just he's happy that I lost the marlin. Than anything. Mm. But it means we enjoy this more. It's more special. Right at the entrance to Mazatlan's commercial harbor, Pleasure crafts assemble. From the anchorage, it's an easy jaunt into the old town sector. We watched the La Paz ferry make its way inside the harbor, knowing that we could all have saved ourselves a lot of time and effort if we had just hitched a ride with that boat instead. The cats at the small yacht club pier welcomed us. Are you interested in our garbage? Yes, me. What's she thinking of fighting? You? The other cat. No, oh. I know, I know that going to we paid 40 pesos to land our dinghy, 20 pesos to fill up some water, and we each were able to take a free shower. Compared to the markets of Baja, this one seemed bustling. We picked up a couple of fresh veggies before saying so long to this funky port. Christian still wasn't quite settled with the motion of the ocean, but he kept a good watch while Tomas put in some hours as our autopilot. A routine was set during this passage. 
check the line every hour or half hour, find no food on the end. So I decided to make some bread with our remaining sunlight in the go sun. But this would be the last batch the little oven would ever make. Just as the camera stopped rolling, the vacuum tube slid free and crashed into a million pieces. No, but there's, there's screws that hold it down. Oh, is there? Yeah, there is. And the, and the screws just like... I didn't shake. There wasn't much time to mourn the loss of our magic cooking device, as the reel started spinning though. Something big was putting up a fight. The guys hoisted this giant trevally into the cockpit. Let it, cleaned up, and we continued on. The next morning exploded with color in anticipation of the town we were about to visit. The river mouth of San Blas was drawing near, and now 24 hours after leaving our last port, we were dodging traffic again. A relatively shallow place with two meters under our keel most of the time. We could imagine how this entrance could be rough in the wrong kind of weather. At the marina fuel dock, we started saying goodbye to our cyclist friends. We were reminded and amazed at how much little Rosa could carry in her belly. How was the trip? It was amazing. Thank you so much. Amazing. <laughs> the cyclists probably thought that we were quite brave for continuing on the journey south at sea. Safe travels! While we saluted their fearlessness for continuing on south in the hot, dusty road. We took a moment to look at what happened to our solar stove, and it looks as though the vibration of our terribly rowdy engine shook some screws loose. Luckily, GoSun products come with a warranty, and we would be able to get the vacuum tube replaced. We sent out our flying camera up amongst the circling raptorial birds. This town, hugging one side of the mangrove river, had a lot to explore. We parked out on the far side just across from the marina and planned on heading up the Snaking River later on. Maybe it was because we had just come from an endless desert landscape of Baja, but it seemed here that every little nook and cranny of this town had some vividness to it. Flora and fauna were fresh and unfamiliar sights. At the market, and on some vacant lot trees, we collected some mangoes. The unripened baby ones are tart, just like Granny Smith apples. But I like snacking on them almost as much as the mature ones. Being sidled up next to a mangrove means that at nightfall you have to be prepared for the noceums or hehenes. We don't have any screens on our windows, but a little rope and light cloth does the trick. The excursion up the river yielded many sightings of birds. We saw many different kinds of herons, vultures, sandpipers. Mm -hmm. 
and even some ibises. There was a small amount of plastic and some reptiles. If you look extremely closely here, there was a mysterious ring-tailed creature that disappeared into the tangle of trees. And although we had the convenience of a small outboard engine to steer us up into the endless maze of trees, we had a minor breakdown and had to row the rest of our way out. The next morning we gathered up our star fruit and water and continued our journey south. We didn't need another giant trevally between the two of us, so we let this big guy go. I actually want to take it. No. The next one, not too far behind, didn't take a hint. I can't even bend it back. Son of a bitch. Oh my god. This, one. this is a hat of this one. And neither did the third one. Just keep getting bigger. Whoa. Ah. Just keep getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> oh man, look at this bad boy. <laughs> look nice. how thick he is. Man, oh man. It's a monster. This is the biggest one I've caught yet. I think I might keep this one. No. No? Next time, I guess. A leisurely 26 nautical miles south of San Blas, we arrived at a place which had been known to be an idyllic stop. We used our stern anchor here in Chacala for the first time. The beach looked inviting, but we didn't take a step ashore. We said a quick hello to some of our neighbors and immediately began to plan an escape route. Thank you to everyone who has helped us along the way. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and support the making of these movies.